Hey, what is up mortals? It is Bubbly Nami here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 2 of what if Izuku had a wood release quirk. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. And so, we begin. Izuku was once more facing the grand gates of UA, this time as a student of the prestigious academy. He was quick to dash inside, searching for the entrance for class 1A. Several minutes later, he was still searching for the room. The sheer size of the school made it a ridiculous task to navigate the labyrinth of hallways. He had questioned several passing students, eventually making it to his class. He could hear the chatting echoing around the room, everyone sounding rather excited. The male slid open the door, stiffening as everything went silent, and he was stared at. He recognized one of the students from the exams, the tall teen who had stated that he had been a distraction. Midoriya was shocked as the blue-haired student bowed, apologizing for his words against the Viridian-eyed male. Having seen him rescue Uraka during the entrance exam, the aforementioned brunette appeared behind the duo, instantly recognizing the boy who helped her and thanking him. As the two chatted with him in the door to the hall, he glanced across the room observing all of his new classmates, freezing as he saw a familiar ash blonde. He quickly averted his eyes, not wishing to be seen by his ex-childhood friend. He began to tune back into the conversation when something else caught his attention, causing him to turn around and see a yellow sleeping bag on the floor. The bag held their homeroom teacher who had sent them to the training field outside after handing out their gym uniforms. The class gathered outside, finding that, rather than attending with orientation, they would be performing a series of tests to see their potential of their quirks. A student who had thought aloud that the test would be fun, instantly catching the attention of their sensei. The rest of the class paled as he announced that since they thought it would be fun, the student who did the worst would be expelled. The stakes were on. Throughout all the tests, the jungle-haired boy kept an eye on the quirk of all his classmates, finding each one extremely intriguing. It soothed his anxiety slightly to think about how well some of the quirks did in the test. In his own case, Midoriya did rather well for himself, aside from eating dirt as he was too distracted by Katsuki's presence behind him to land cleanly when he launched himself forward on the 50 meter dash with his quirk. The standing long jump ended with much better landing and him clearing the sandbox. The ball throw was a bit more complicated but he still scored rather well by throwing the ball forward and calling force one of his wooden beams from the earth to slam it into the ball, sending it rocketing off. The effort he put in was not lost as he managed to make it into ninth place. Far from the last spot, a diminutive student occupied. He felt bad for the other male as his pale face watched their teacher look down at him. The feel of pity was replaced with a mix of relief and confusion as the man revealed that his whole threat was a logical ruse to pull out their full potential. He handed them all the syllabus before sending them off to change out of their gym uniforms. Everyone happily did so, heading home afterwards due to the length of the test. The next day was more like a normal day at school, filled with more common subjects. The part that wasn't normal, much to the Riveridian eyed youth's joy, was the pro heroes were teaching the classes. Even at lunch, a pro hero, Lunch Rush, was making a gourmet meal for the students. As they reached their final class of the day, Class 1A sat in together, whispering excitedly as they wondered who would be their instructor for hero training. Their curiosity was sated as a booming voice echoed from the entrance as a mountainous man entered the room. All Might, the symbol of peace himself, would be teaching them. The man began a lecture over what they would be covering in this specific class, before revealing a number of suitcases hidden within the walls. He explained that they were hero costumes, that they had commissioned before school had started. Everyone excitedly clamored for their suitcase as their teachers sent them off to get changed before heading to the training ground. They joined the pro as quickly as possible. In a similar cityscape to the one where they were in the entrance exam, Izuku was happy to see that his outfit had the custom features he had hoped for. The costume was a forest green and black hero suit with brown gauntlets at the end of his arms. The gauntlets held soil in, which he could use his quirk and allow his quirk to be used in the gauntlet. 
the beams wrapping around his arms so he could use them as weapons or a shield. He had a wooden mask like Kumai Woods, only his covered the lower part of his face, rather than the entire one. On his back was a lightweight pack that held water with a tube connected to his gauntlets. There wasn't much there for him to use, but he could use an attack to pierce whatever was in the way of him, getting to the ground beneath it, to better utilize his quirk. He jogged up to Uraka, who was wearing a spacesuit-like costume that fit her quirk. Everyone's attention was brought to All Might, as he began to explain the exercise for the day. It would be a fall hero versus villain battle, where the students would be split into pairs before being pit against each other. The goal of the heroes was to disarm the bomb that the villains were supposed to protect. A question was raised about how badly they could hurt another student, which was answered vaguely that the pros watching them would intervene if things got too rough. A few of the students gained a nervous look at that. The symbol of peace pulled out a box that they would be pulling lots from in order to determine the teams. Everyone drew their lots, Midoriya ending up being paired with Ochako. The teams were then randomly pitted against each other, a pallor color leaking into the juniper-haired boy, as he saw he was going against Team D, more specifically, against Bakugo, who was one part of Team D. They stepped up to the building, where the ashen blonde and bespeeched male were allowed to enter first to prepare themselves as the villains. A few minutes later, a buzzer rang out as a sign for the two fall heroes to start. They both ran in, the emerald-eyed teen warning his teammate about his ex-friend's explosive quirk and temper. It was just his luck that he was cut off in his explanation with his very voice. They both snapped around to see the other male standing in a corridor, the grenade gauntlets catching Izuku's attention for a second. Pacheco, go up the stairs and keep heading to the bomb. He saw that she was prepared to argue. Please, don't argue. I'll be fine. I'll hold him back while you sneak up and take care of the bomb. Really, Deku? You're so cocky that you think you can take me on alone. Sparks rose in the hot-tempered adolescent. You know, that really pisses me off. He lunged toward, letting off a powerful detonation as the freckled boy Midoriya flung himself to the side in a roll. As he focused on his gauntlet, a sharpened wood beam piercing through the thin area of his gauntlet, meant for the attack, and slammed it into the concrete. His arm tingles unpleasantly at the reverberations at the weapon smashing into some of the concrete. He kept it steady and let it grow, twisting his arm and hearing the rock give way. Tch, the hell are you doing, Deku? The abrasion teen was genuinely confused at what was happening. That was, until the male in front of him shoved his other hand into the hole, making contact with the earth beneath the building. The concrete in front of Katsuki crumbled, as wooden spikes shot out from the ground forming a barrier between the two. The red-eyed student used his explosions to create some distance between him and the thorn-like logs. He was shocked to see such a distinct change in the shape and power of his ex-friend's quirk. What the hell was that? Your quirk has never done that before. He launched a volley of explosions at the barrier, shocked to find that they were scorched but still stood as a barrier. How the hell are a bunch of... Branches tree still standing. He growled as he looked down at the gauntlets he had on his arms, a sinister smile growing on his face. He brought up the topic of gauntlets, explaining the purpose of his. Much to Izuku's growing horror, they collected his sweat within them, storing it so he could later use it for an all-out attack, an attack he was prepared to use now. Kachan, you're insane! You can't do that. It's way too dangerous. You can't tell me what to do, Deku. All Might saw how quickly the situation was worsening, attempting to stop the furious student. However, his efforts were in vain. The ashen blonde yelled as he detonated a massive explosion towards the Viridian-eyed teenager across from him. Midoriya stabbed the spike from his gauntlet into the wall and used his quirk to make it fling him to the side, the shockwave and heat from the discharge burning him as it flung him into a wall. He cried out in pain, as he made an actual dent in the wall before falling to the ground. 
The suit he was wearing managed to keep him from getting burned too badly, but he still had first to second degree burns across his back. He pulled himself up painfully, wincing as he finally registered the pain of the burns on his back. Suddenly, a buzzer sounded as their instructor declared that the hero team had won. Izuku was shocked for a moment before a pained smile took over his face. Ochaka must have been able to disarm the bomb the villains were guarding. A cry of frustration echoed from the hall, in which the crimson-eyed teen was still standing, everyone exiting the building. Uraka supporting her teammate despite insistence that he was fine. Some minor healing from Recovery Girl perked the boy up, although he was even more tired now. At least he wasn't feeling the ache of the injuries and burns he had sustained from earlier. He went to the monitor room with his partner to watch the remaining battles, noting the quirks of his classmates. The power of the other heroes in training were so diverse and unique. He was left wordless as he saw the heterochromatic student cover the majority of the skyscraper in a sea of ice. He desperately wished that he had his hero analysis notebook to record what he could discover about the other students. He also made note of several other notable quirks that caught his attention, even wondering if some of their techniques could work similar with his quirk. At long last, the final match was finished and they were gathered together once more. All Might handed out advice, with the help of the students, about what each of them could do to further their performance in the future. Afterwards, they were dismissed and allowed to change before leaving the school. Izuku exited the building several minutes later with Uraka and Ida. Talking animatedly with them, their conversation was interrupted by a person calling the juniper-haired teen. Hey, Deku! What the hell was that during hero training? Your worthless quirk never did anything like that. How? He grabbed the collar of the other boy, the two by his side moving to help him. He motioned for them to stop, wanting to deal with this by himself. Because I didn't give up and I didn't listen to you. Midoriya jerked out of the hold he was in. And I'm glad I didn't, or I would never have found out all I can do. I'm glad I had my support in my dream. Support I wished I had from the friend I thought I had. The ashen blonde was frozen, blinking and wordless. As the freckled adolescent walked away with his two new friends, Izuku was on his own path. The path he didn't need Katsuki on. Thank you all so much for sticking around and I hope that you enjoyed our video. Before you leave, we would like to let you know that we the Celestials have many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video. So goodbye and have a divine day.